Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. So this is a little Q&A video to finish our series on intelligence. So there are just three videos in the series if you want to catch up. But otherwise, let's dive in. We've got two awesome questions from a complete stranger, Phoebe Gutter. Okay, so first question. How is, can AI be utilized? How is slash can AI be utilized to combat social issues across the world? such as climate change, food waste, famine, urban planning, etc. Okay, great question. So first, climate change. A large contributor towards this problem is energy production, and therefore AI can help with increasing the energy efficiency of technology. And a really good example of this is actually in Google's data centers, where they've applied an AI system called DeepMind, which they own, to their cooling systems and decrease their energy usage by 40%. Another major part of climate change is deforestation. So the World Resources Institute actually started this thing called the Global Forest Watch, where they use satellite data to look at and monitor the health of forests and try and see if there was any deforestation. But the only problem was that human analysis of all that data was really slow, and often by the time they found stuff and went to act on it, there was already severe damage so they needed rapid analysis of enormous amounts of data. So that's where AI came in. It's now learnt to detect deforestation much earlier than the human analysis, and if that information is acted upon, that's saving a lot of forest as well. A similar idea is being used to combat global poverty and try and achieve the global goal of eradicating extreme poverty less than $1.25 US a day by 2030. The system was initiated by Stanford and it analyzes rural and urban populations mainly looking at four different things. It looks at the population's distance from roads and safe water sources, and then it looks at the intensity of light being emitted by the area during the nighttime, as high-lit areas are typically more developed. And then it even looks at the product productivity of crops surrounding the populated area. But because this is an AI system, it ultimately relies on deep learning rather than set rules. So the more data it gets, the better it will be able to identify which areas are most in need. And this way of surveying is a lot better than current methods, just because of accessibility and conflict. As the World Bank said that only 25 out of the 48 Sub-Saharan African nations conducted two or more household surveys between 1990 and 2012. So AI really could help eradicate extreme poverty. And then you mentioned food waste. This is a crazy problem. Roughly one third of the food produced for human consumption every year is lost or wasted. Just half of that wastage is enough to feed 1.5 billion people. That's almost double the amount of people in extreme poverty we were just talking about. But minimizing food waste doesn't just make environmental and ethical sense, it also makes economic sense. So progress has been made in using AI to pinpoint consumer demand therefore suggesting the optimal supply and minimizing waste. The most progress of this has happened in Japan, where they've used an AI system that analyzes weather and sales data to suggest supply, but even social media. So AI definitely has the potential to minimize food waste if we follow the information that it provides. And then famine. I couldn't find anything directly targeting famine, but I thought that minimizing food waste and being able to monitor weather and climate more accurately, and also being able to monitor poverty more accurately through the satellite imagery. It should decrease the damages done by a famine if all that information is used effectively. And last but not least, urban planning. There are so many applications for AI in urban planning, making our cities and towns more efficient. Progress has mainly focused on improving the efficiency of lighting, parking, and transport to date but it's still early days. So overall, AI definitely has the potential to solve some serious world problems, but ultimately it's just providing more accurate information for us to act upon. And then question number two. What about other animals like dolphins, elephants, octopuses, etc.? Is their intelligence judged by common standards or just relative to human intelligence? Well, we haven't agreed upon common standards for intelligence between humans, let alone for animals. So yes, animal intelligence is just compared relative to human intelligence. But often because of this, we miss amazing forms of intelligence in animals all around us that we just don't even realize. For example, you mentioned dolphins. Now dolphins have an advantage over humans because 
Our main sense is sight, but our main form of communication is auditory. Whereas dolphins' main sense and their main form of communication is auditory because they use echolocation. So from this it's even believed that dolphins may be able to send images directly to each other by mimicking echolocation. So if one dolphin wanted to send the image of a fish to another dolphin, it could mimic the echolocation of a fish and the, that image of a fish would be recreated in the mind of the other dolphin. So the equivalent would be if humans could send instantaneous holographic images to one another. And it's actually really interesting because one of the genes we talked about in the first episode for being responsible for human intelligence has had a similar mutation in dolphins. So if you remember the ASPM gene, which is responsible for our increased brain capacity, has also mutated to increase the brain capacity of dolphins. So that's a really interesting link and it's created pretty sophisticated intelligence in both cases. You also mentioned elephants who do show remarkable intelligence. They've been found to walk hundreds of kilometers between water sources and take the most efficient route, suggesting they know exactly where they're going. And it's also really interesting because if they pass elephant skeletons along the way, even if it's just the skeleton remaining, they will mourn it and even comfort each other. And then octopuses. And yes, you can say octopi, but I think it's octopuses. They are remarkably intelligent and the most alien compared to humans. I mean, you've probably heard of them being able to open jars and escape aquariums and use tools, but they have a really unique form of intelligence. They can observe their surroundings and then imagine the perspective of the prey or predators around them and then consciously camouflage, changing their color and texture. And the mimic octopus can even observe other animals around it and then mimic them like crabs, fish and even sea snakes. They have even demonstrated metacognition and a sense of self. But the really weird part is that octopuses do have a kind of brain in their heads but then eight other neural hubs in the base of each arm. And they have, their intelligence has evolved completely separately from humans or other animals. I mean, our last common ancestor was 1.2 billion years ago. A potential reason for octopuses' ability to learn is that they can't pass information down between generations, unlike dolphins or humans or elephants. And the reason they can't do this is that the mother protects and cares for her eggs for months without eating, but then when they hatch, she dies. So each generation starts from afresh and must learn for themselves. Although a study just in April might provide another explanation for octopus's intelligence. When you create proteins, information from DNA is carried using RNA. And so we looked at the RNA transcripts in octopus's brains and found 60% had been recoded by editing. This compares anywhere from fruit flies to humans with about 1% being recoded through editing. So we don't fully understand the implications of this, but it might even be another form of evolution. But I digress. Basically, animals do have mental abilities far greater than humans. It's just that we tend to compare everything, including ourselves, to our created standards. So I hope you found that interesting. And if you haven't seen the Intelligence series yet, it's just there. And subscribe if you want to join our community and see the coming videos. I'd love to hear from you down below. And, as always, stay curious.